Roller skiing is a great way to enjoy cross-country skiing all year round. You don't even need snow to do roller skiing. Cross-country skiing is one of the safest sports to do. However, it can be one of the more dangerous sports to train for, and that's because the pavement is not a very forgiving surface. It's really not the place to learn how to cross-country ski. It's a great place to train for cross-country skiing, provided you already understand the basic elements of cross-country skiing and your technique is reasonably well advanced. Classic roller skis have a wide, stable, flat wheel on them. That wide wheel provides enough stability in order to simulate the effect of skiing on a track. On the snow, we have the benefit of the tracks in order to provide a certain level of stability. However, on the road, we have no tracks and we depend on the width of the wheel in order to give us that extra little bit of stability. The front wheels on a classic roller ski only rotate in one direction. That rotation allows the roller ski to glide forward. However, it provides perfect traction in order to propel ourselves forward. It's possible to do things that you could never get away with on the snow. So because of this, focus on your technique. Push down to grip and kick forward to glide. Remember that the way that skis work is to grip, you need to actually push down on a ski, not push backward. So in order to push yourself forward, you actually have to push downwards on your weighted leg in order to propel yourself forward. Think of the kick, in fact, as the kick of a soccer ball. You're actually kicking your weight onto your gliding leg. The ski poles that we use for roller skiing are just like the poles that we use on the snow. One small modification is the replacement of the snow baskets with a road ferrule. The ferrules that we use on the road have a very sharp carbide steel tip. It's the job of that hard carbide steel to bite into the pavement in order to give us propulsion to move ourselves forward. Some people think that using rubber tips on the ends of your ski poles is a more effective way of propelling yourself forward. Rubber tends to bounce. Steel actually bites into the pavement. In order to actually provide yourself with propulsion, your ski poles have to actually bite into the asphalt pavement in order to propel yourself forward. By planting your poles in an absolutely vertical alignment, it allows the carbide steel tips to actually bite into the pavement. If you plant your poles at a slight angle, they will tend to skip off the pavement and not provide that perfect grip that will allow you to propel yourself forward. This is a great exercise for emulating back on the snow. The double poling technique is a technique that's used both in skating and in classic. We rely on our core muscles, or our body core, in order to make use of this technique. It's initiated by a downward press with our upper body weight being pressed onto our poles with our arms rigidly held in place. As we push through with our upper body, we then, and only then, extend with our arms. The arms are only brought into play at the very end of the double pole. In order to extend the power phase of your double poling, you can introduce a kick with your legs into your double pole. That's the technique that we refer to as the kick double pull. In a kick double pull, you're coordinating a leg push with an arm or upper body push. We use this technique 
in order to propel ourselves along a flat or a slightly uphill grade. So how do you go downhill on roller skis? The simple answer is very carefully. You can use speed reducers in order to limit your speed on a descent. By engaging the speed reducers, you may actually have to push in order to continue to go down a hill. You can simulate uphills by engaging the speed reducers on your roller skis. If you stay on the flat and engage the speed reducers, you have the ability to go uphill without the necessary danger of going down that very same hill. We can simply stay on the flats and engage the speed reducers to simulate the effects of going up a hill. When you go downhill on roller skis, you have to be very careful. The cost of failure is a little bit higher. Pavement is more unforgiving than snow. So focus on being stable, keeping your center of gravity low, and shift your weight onto your gliding ski. Some roller skis allow you to add a brake to them. The brake is a very simple device. It allows you to put pressure using the back of your ankle or your calf onto this pad that transfers pressure through this lever to a brake pad that presses on the back wheel. The technique that we use in order to do this is not something that we would normally use on cross-country skis. You simply push the braking ski out in front of you and put pressure on the back of the pad and lock up the back wheel in order to bring yourself to a stop. The roller skis that we use for skate skiing use a narrow wheel. The narrow wheel simulates the effect of the edge of your skis. Skate skiing on roller skis is pretty straightforward, just like skate skiing on the snow is. We're pushing with the edge of one roller ski and gliding on the other roller ski. It's important that you focus on getting your weight committed to each of those legs and each side of that phase, the power phase and the glide phase. The two skate of roller skiing is just like the two skate on the snow. We push with our upper body on every other leg push. So there's two leg pushes for every arm push. The two skate we use when we're cruising along. It's often used on slight downhills or on flat surfaces. The one skate on roller skiing is very important to work on. It's that telling technique. It's the indicator that you're actually transferring your weight efficiently. The one skate, we actually push with our upper body on every one of our leg pushes. We push one to one. One upper body push for one leg push. This is a technique we use for acceleration and power. The offset we use to propel ourselves uphill. With the offset, we're slightly offsetting the timing of our pole plant. It looks a little bit like a double pole plant. However, one arm is slightly raised. That causes a delay in the planting of that pole. By offsetting the timing of our pole plants, we're actually distributing our power stroke with our upper body over a longer stride. That allows us to maintain our momentum and keep gliding up a hill. Now that you understand the basics of roller skiing, it's time to get out there and practice. Enjoy skiing with or without snow.
Thank you.